Om Gyanti Jivanda Jana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurubina Maha Sri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Vandeham Shiguro Sri Utapa De Kamalam Shigurum Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagajatam Sahaganat Raganatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahaganat Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Scha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaura Vani Pachari Ne Nirvase Sasunya Vari Pastyatya De Satari Ne Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Bhakti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Tinamine Sri Varshavana Bidevi Dai Te Kripa Daya Krishna Sambandha Vigyanam Daya Nepava Vena Maha Madhura Ujwa Premadhyaya Sri Rupa Nuga Bhakti Da Sri Gaura Karuna Shakti Vigarahaya Namostate Namaste Gauravani Sri Murtaye Dina Tarine Sri Rupa Nuga Virurapa Siddhanta Dvanta Harine Namo Gauda Kishoraya, Saksad Bhairagya, Murtaye, Vi Pralamba Asambo De, Padambo Jayate Namaha. Namo Bhakti Venodaya, Satchidananda Namine, Gauda Shakti, Sarupaya, Rupanuga Padayate, Gauda Vibhava Bhume Stvam, Nirdhisesha Sajana Priya. Vaishnava Sarva Bomba Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha Panchakopa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pahevacha Patitanam Bhavane Pyo Vaishnava Pyo Namaha Namaha Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prema Padaya Te Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namani Gona Triste Namaha Pancha Tattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupa Kam Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shakti Kram He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Dayatam Sudato Pangor Mama Bama Vanda Matir Gati Mat Sarvasya Padambo Jau Radha Madana Mohano Divya Rinda Kaupa Drumada Srimad Ratna Sagara Singhasana So Sri Si Radha Srila Bhil Govinda Devo Prastali Bhi Sevya Manas Marami Srimad Rasa Rasadam Bhi Vamsi Vata Patasi Taha Karsan Venu Gita Gopi Gopir Nathi Tainama Stute Namaha Taptakanchana, Gaurangi, Radhe, Vrindavaneswari, Vrishabhanu, Suti Devi, Ranamami, Hari Priye, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitana, Tanuna, Tanunda, Siyadvaita, Gadad, Har, Sivasari, Gaur, Bhakta, Vindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Hmm. There is an element that we, is very essential in the execution of our devotional service, and that is trust. Do we trust? Who do we trust? Where do we place our trust in? How do we become trustworthy ourselves? Trust. Um, Krishna speaks the Bhagavad Gita and he gives you an understanding of what he is about, who he is, how he interacts with his devotees. And he does that in order for us to help developing not only the knowledge that he's given, but the trust that comes that is necessary in order to take advantage of the knowledge. Do we trust Krishna? 
That's an interesting point. We might think, well, I trust Krishna. But how far do we trust Krishna? And does our trust depend on what he does and what he doesn't do? Does, do we evaluate our trust according to our likes and dislikes? How do we understand? How do we come to the position of having full faith in whatever Krishna says and whatever Krishna does? No matter how apparently hard to understand it appears. Uh, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he is the all good manifestation of everything that is beneficial in existence. Krishna is the well wisher. He says that in the Bhagavad Gita. Suhidam Sarvadehinam Yantam Yam Shatta Rich to Tea. And then I, I'm the well wisher of all living entities. He has everybody's best interest at heart. Uh, our trust sometimes in someone else is based on our person in, our interest and our personal interests or even our personal evaluation of the of what is beneficial for us may always may not always be correct or complete and therefore when when it comes to trusting you know we sometimes we can take it to a certain level but then we can't go beyond that so we have our limitations but uh, how do we get beyond that? How, to, how can we come to the point of trusting Krishna completely? And is he trustworthy? Well, he says he is. That He says, Sarva Dharma Pariksha Jam Mame Kam Saranam Baja Aham Tvam Sarva Bhafe Yo Moksha Yishami Masuchaha. He tells us, uh, just ban in all varieties of religion. In other words, give up all these ideas on how you can make advancement in spiritual life. And just surrender to me. I'll take care of you. By your surrender, then everything will come. I'll give you protection. I'll give you elevation. I'll give you everything that you're looking for simply by full surrender to me. Now, do we trust Krishna? I mean, uh, and we might say, well, I, yeah, I, I trust Krishna. That's nice. But, but then, he, then when he starts taking certain things away from us, then where did, does our trust uh, continue? Uh, or do we have ours our trust based on our own evaluation of what we need to lose and what we need to gain? <laughs> but one who trusts Krishna completely, even if Krishna puts him in a very awkward or what we say, even life-threatening situation, do we still feel, still have that trust that Krishna is there? Krishna is there to protect us. Krishna is there to elevate us. So uh, after going through all of the different mindsets that we can possibly develop, before we can actually trust Krishna, we have to know more about him. And that's the foundation for developing trust. Although we have this principle, we can have blind trust or blind faith. They say blind faith is not wrong. It's only wrong if it's in the wrong object. If you have blind faith in God, that's fine. A child may not know everything about their parents, but they have complete faith that their parents are there and there to protect them. So in our devotional life, do we have that kind of uh, understanding that we can come to that point of trust? Or have we already gained that simply by accepting Krishna as being all good, as he says he is, or all beneficial as he says he is? Uh, always there to protect us as he says he is. So that this principle is foundational in, in understanding our relationship with Krishna and moving forward in that relationship. In the Bible, there's a nice story of uh, one 
person, his name was Job. And Job was an, Job was an agriculturalist. He had a very wonderful son, a young son. And he had uh, a lot of, uh, um, what we say, he was well off materially. God had provided so many nice things for him. So the story goes on that one time, the personification of evil, sometimes they call it the devil, came to the Lord and said, yes, your, your, your devotee, uh, uh, Job, he has so much faith in you because you know, you, you're giving him everything. But if you were to take things away from him, would he be the same? Would he lose his faith? Uh, the Lord spoke to the devil and said, all right, you can test him. You can test him and see if his faith is there, but don't kill him. You can do everything to test him. So the devil jumped in his agricultural field dried up, uh, his home burned down. He, was, he started to lose everything. And still his faith in God was still there. And then uh, the devil kept taking everything away. Finally, the devil could see then, he was very devoted, but he was gonna continue to test him. So the devil, uh, well, actually, the Lord did this. He actually, looked, the Lord acted on behalf of the devil to take everything away just to show. And then at one point, the devil said, all right, tell him to kill his son. So the Lord said, all right. And so he told Job, um, my, my desire is that you kill your son. So Job took out a knife and he was about ready to kill his son. And at that point, the Lord stepped in and said, that's enough and stopped him there. And, and then it was shown that Job's faith in the Lord was uh, unshakable, even in the most dangerous and most... Uh, life-threatening situation, not for himself, but for his son. He had lost everything. Um, that's complete trust. That's complete faith. Uh, I don't think Krishna will put you in, in that situation, but you might find that in sometimes in your life that you're forced to trust the Lord that whatever, that things that are happening, you can't really understand why they're happening or what is the purpose or how to take shelter of the Lord in that situation, or how to have complete faith in the Lord in that situation. Um, recently, I won't go into any details. I had a little experience where Krishna really tested me. Um, but I could, after I had gone through the test, I also understood why the test was given to me. Two reasons. One was that somehow or other I had uh, I had played with the material energy in the wrong way, and therefore there was a reaction. But I had done that previously with the no reaction, but this time the reaction was there. I understood the Lord was teaching me this is a, this is something you should learn from this experience and not go in that direction again because each time it could be worse. And so after having that experience, I understood, yes, this, this is what I should avoid. And it was about health. It was about abusing my health in the wrong way. And by I had kept on doing that. And so now in this particular incident, I got a very heavy reaction from it. But I could understand Krishna was teaching me something. Not that uh, I shouldn't shouldn't go down that route anymore. So that's an example. That's not a very 
hard thing to understand. You, you kind of learn. But we, we get tested all the time. And the question is, do we have faith in the Lord? Do we have faith that whatever he, he allows to happen? Because Krishna has two, two, uh, two potencies he works with. One. one is a one is called his will, and the other one is his permitting potency. There are certain things he wants to happen, and there's certain things he allows to happen. Try to understand the difference between the two. He wants certain things to happen, and they do happen. But then again, he allows certain things to happen. And there's a reason why he allows that. They may be coming from the material energy in which they are. And they afflict his devotee in different ways. But he does that in order to somehow or other teach us a little lesson, help us to become a little bit more detached in our practice of Krishna consciousness. Uh, yeah, those are the basic things. Becoming a little more detached to become, uh, learn something about ourselves and how we can improve in our devotional service. So Krishna allows things to happen and we shouldn't lose faith, but always take shelter and that, that comes by learning more and more about Krishna. The more you learn about Krishna, the more you see how he does things and why he does what he does. And how he always acts for the benefit of his devotee. And so uh, to build trust is not something that is easy. They say... To build trust takes years, to destroy trust, trust takes one moment. Now let's take this same principle in the relationships with other people, where that all the, the other people are not so perfect as God is. We develop trust in others sometimes, and sometimes we find our trust being, you know, uh, 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 violated. So in that violation, sometimes we then we we fail to trust in the next situation. But trusting people in the material world, of course, they say you should never trust a non-devotee because the non-devotees they never do anything without some motivation like that. The scriptures say that one who who is not performing devotional service. Actually, it says one who is not a pure devotee, there's always a reason to distrust up to a certain point, unless you have the experience of trusting that person and they have shown to be trustworthy. But when trust is broken, uh, how do you react to that? What is the relationship with that person anymore? Do you forgive and forget or do you discuss the situation to see what caused the trust to be broken or do you forgive and not forget that means you forgive the person but in order not to uh to, in order to avoid that to have from happening again you do not trust the same uh, this the person but still you forgive them. So these things are something to think about because trust is the basis of relationships. Um, there are people who will gain your trust in a very nice way in order to get take you more and more into their confidence so later on they can cheat you. And that's another type of person who is very... Uh, cunning and trying to just men do that with women women when men want to control women they become very kind to the women and by becoming very kind the women generally start to feel inclined to that person out of kindness but they use kindness 
as a way to uh, get the confidence of the woman. And then when the time is right, then they exploit them in different ways. So um, that's just, of course, then you might think, well, everybody who's kind to me, I should distrust. <laughs> well, that's, uh, uh, we, that's something that we have to understand through experience. And, uh, but always be, always built, trust has to be built. It's not something that comes just so easily. But when we uh, work with the people and then we see that they're trustworthy and we can tell by their nature that they're trustworthy. There are people who have a tendency to like to be known as a very well-wishing friend or someone who is uh, very, very enthusiastic to take on responsibilities and wanting to do things for others. When it comes to responsibility, sometimes people who promise some fail to carry through with their promises. And then when that happens, then we think, well, should I trust them again? So this whole process of trusting and not trusting is a very big part of our Krishna consciousness. And it should be understood very carefully in relationship to our execution of devotional service. Devotees have a tendency to be very trustworthy. Why? Because devotees are trustworthy themselves. And they say, Atmanam Manyate Jagat. Atmanam Manyate Jagat means, as you see things, you think other people see things in the same way. But that's not necessarily true. Usually a trustworthy person thinks everybody else is trustworthy. Until they get cheated, and then they start changing in their activities but because they are trustworthy by nature they tend to see to go back to their nature again and again become trustworthy so and especially when it comes to confidentiality this is another part of the whole program of trusting what is that confidentiality you want to disclose something that is not meant to be known to the general public, to someone who you feel will understand your situation, will sympathize with your situation, or will be able to help the situation. Um, so that therefore we should find someone who we can trust. And that, that, that uh, criterion for developing that trust means that that person you know to be trustworthy in previous experiences with other people and maybe with yourself also. And so uh, then, then the, otherwise, sometimes you trust people with something confidential that should not be known to people in general. And pretty soon you hear somebody else talking about you and you're wondering, what happened? How did that get out? So that happens sometimes like that. It's called confidentiality. And that, that should be done only with those that you can absolutely trust. And not only trust, but have the qualifications to help you in that situation. Or can be there to um, uh, just to listen and then give advice when when requested. But these are some things we should understand about the principle of trust. It's such an important part of our Krishna consciousness. And when it comes to Krishna, I think we can trust Krishna completely. But, but those, there's still those of us who perform those devotional service will only take that trust so far. So how far can we take that trust? That will be tested as you go on in your devotional service. Do you trust Krishna in every situation? Okay, trust means that he'll, he's always doing the best thing for you, although you can't see it when it's happening. 
All right, so we'll stop there and see if there's any questions about this topic we discussed. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for the very important topic. Um, thank you so much. Uh, devotees, if you have any questions or comments or uh, realizations, uh, please go ahead. You can unmute yourself. Thank you. Nobody trusts me. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, I joined. Uh, Hare Krishna. Can you hear me, Maharaj? Yes, now I can. Yes. Maharaj, sorry, I joined a little bit late today, but I, I was listening for the last 10 minutes. And I have a question on trust because one of the points that you mentioned is that you should disclose, you know, you should uh, disclose your mind with confident to whom or confidential matters to whom you can trust. So my question is, Maharaj, should we should we approach? Yes, we have to dis disclose our confidential matters. Uh, but if you are seeking guidance, should we disclose it to somebody who we know would give us the the right message? Because somebody we, we might, you know, when we are when we are looking for some, our endorsements of our thoughts, we would try to approach somebody who would yeah. sympathize with us, not really who would really yeah. tell you as things are. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that. That is, that's not just trust, but someone who is who you can understand based on the knowledge you know about that person that they are qualified. Yeah, that's part of the confidentiality. And, but Maharaj also, we should not be afraid by if that person telling us, because we might be thinking of, we might have a wrong conceptions. We, so if that person says to us that this is wrong and, and as a true friend would tell you, even if things I don't like to hear, will tell me the things that I want to that's right for me because when when we want to reveal some things we would go normally approach somebody who we know will sympathize with us even though our mind would say you know even if our mind is thinking the wrong wrong things and if we want an endorsement of those feelings or thoughts we would approach somebody who would endorse our feelings and we would not go to somebody who would challenge that yeah is that is that what you want to do mm -hmm. Just to i get just to get an endorsement and yeah that's that's there too yeah well i feel like this what do you think so you you're gonna you know they get all you want is a rubber stamp in that case uh you don't really want any advice or you just want somebody to hear you that's so yeah uh you know uh, I don't want to sound a little bit uh, critical, but a lot of times people come and they, uh, they're, they're, they're telling you their problems. And as soon as you try to give a solution, they don't want it. Yeah. And that's usually true um, with women. Women, a lot of times come, I mean, this is nothing against the, the, the female species, but they want someone to hear and sympathize with them in their situation. And rather than getting any advice about how to help the situation. Although the situation is a problem, they don't want advice. All they want is a, a sympathetic ear, that's all. If you're married, you'll understand that one. Yeah, that happens a lot in married life. The women don't want the advice. They just simply want to uh, have somebody listen and uh, acknowledge their feelings. And that's not wrong, but it doesn't, it doesn't solve any problems. 
it makes people feel good for a little while that somebody cares and that's good but it doesn't it doesn't if there's any reason to speak about some situation there's no solution that is wanted in that situation that's all right go ahead and do that but it's just all they all someone in that case simply wants someone to listen to their to their emotions to their feelings that's all Thank you, Maharaj. I think for me, it is better to go to somebody who will tell you as things as they are. Otherwise, yeah. it doesn't. Yes. That's, that's the reason. Yeah, well, find that person who you can trust and who is knowledgeable. Yes. Both. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, Guru Maharaj, there is a question on chat. Um, she, uh, Kalakanti Radhika Mataji, um, she messaged me privately. She is asking a question, um, follow up, um, like a follow up with uh, Diptesh Prabhu's question. Um, sometimes we want to reveal our, our mind to say the truth, but it is very difficult to trust that person uh, because they will not uh, reveal to other third person or not. And so uh, we have a little doubt in that area. So how do we have a full confidence? So how we will know that uh, this person is uh, like a correct person to uh, reveal our mind? Well... Um... You might ask other people about them if they have experience with that person or not. I think that's the only way you can do it. We have to find out what is their track record. Are they, are they, uh, can they keep the confidence or not? And then you have to go to other people who have some experience with them and find out first. Otherwise, you have to take a chance. If you want to do that, that's up to you. You need some verifiable confirmation or no confirmation. Now, if you see like a person is a spiritual master and they have disciples, and they're counseling their disciples, you can say that person is trustworthy. But if there's any incident where the trust has been, uh, you know, broken, then uh, that puts that person in question. Then it's most likely not the trust then. The only way you can do it is verify it ahead of time with experiences from others. That's practically the only thing. Is this person trustworthy? Is this person qualified? Find out. Yes, good morning. Thank you. <clears throat> I think, uh, Mataji, I uh, hope that uh, answers your question. Devotees, any more questions? Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Holy Next. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Maharaj, you mentioned in uh, one of the statements, like, you know, we should not trust non-devotees. But if you have a, a close person who is, I mean, he's, he's a non-devotee, but still you trust them, like, you know, they can keep your secrets. So will that be an advisable to, to reveal our mind to them or, or no at all, as long as they are? Well, the scriptures, the scriptures say, you know, you can't put your trust and some someone who is under the influence of the material energy. 
because as the material energy changes, then that trust also may be jeopardized by the situation. People are trustworthy under certain conditions, but when conditions change. But a real person who is trustworthy is not subjected to changes. So the material, and you, you find that in that one verse, yes, yes, the bhakti, bhagavati, akinchana, gunar, sevesta, ve, sura, harava bhakto, guno, harava bhakto, guno. Let me see. Yes, yes, the bhakti, bhagavati, akinchana, survai, gunar, tastar, to say, sura, harava bhakto, guna. Can't remember. The Manol Ratayana Sato Dayato Bahi. Can't remember the whole Sanskrit, but it's. Uh, mm, go, go to that verse, fifth canto, fifth chapter, no, fifth canto, 18th chapter, verse number 12, 518, 12. Yes, 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 bhakti, bhagavati. Yes, good. Uh, and the 18th chapter. Yeah. Yes, the, yes, yes, the bhakti, bhagavati, akinchana, gunar. Harava bhakta. Yes, yes, the bhakti, bhagavati, akinchana, savai guna tatra samastate sura. Arava Bhakto Kutu Mahaguna Manon Ritena Sati Davayato Bahi. Here's the answer to your question. Read the answer, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. All the demigods and their exalted qualities, such as religion, knowledge, and renunciation, become manifest in the body of one who has developed unalloyed devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Vasudeva. On the other hand, a person devoid of devotional service and engaged in material activities has no good qualities. Even if he is adept at the practice of mystic yoga or the honest endeavor of maintaining his family and relatives, he must be driven by his own mental speculations and must engage in the service of the Lord's external energy. How can there be any good qualities in such a man? So you're taking a chance and you trust such a person because they can change at any time as the material energy changes. In other words, people are trustworthy under certain conditions or certain situations. It's a risk. <laughs> Thank you, Dilwal. That that clears. Thank you. Thanks. More like Russian roulette, you know. Um, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> like, uh, so when uh, we, uh, usually when we are dealing with devotees in relationships and all, um, we feel that I'm, I'm, I feel exactly um, that I'm sincere, I'm trustworthy. Um, like that I have some opinion about myself, but uh, suppose if other person doesn't have that one, uh, that opinion on me, uh, then I feel a little hurt or like my ego uh, is um, badly hurt. So then um, I'm noticing that that in my in myself, Guru Maharaj. So uh, how should we take in that, that? So even though other person is not trusting me or uh, not ready to trust me, um, and you, you, there must be something that that there is there that makes them distrust you. Hmm. What is that? No idea. No idea. You feel like you're okay, but they yeah. don't. So there's something there that gives them the idea that you're not. So you might have to find out what that is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. We might we know we can always see our, ourselves correctly. Yeah, because um, I always think that I am right. So, well, ask ask your husband. Does does he agree? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> He'll not. Okay. <laughs> well, well, why don't, I mean, he knows you pretty well, I think. <laughs> Yes. Nobody, nobody should be thinking that I am good Guru Maharaj and I am trustworthy. You know, it should come from the other person. That we, we want to feel like that about ourselves. It's just like, yeah, I'm trustworthy. People can come to me. There's no problem like that. And that if you establish a track record and there's no problem, then yeah, but that doesn't that doesn't come so easily. Takes time, it takes experience before that actually that comes. And if you do something where people misunderstand, although you may be fine in doing what you did in the right way, but if they misunderstand it, then that's their problem, but still they'll find reasons to, you know, to, to distress in the future. Mm. So what's the solution is uh, and you can only trust certain people. That's good news, yeah. And therefore in the scriptures it said that you can only trust the pure devotee. Yeah. It says that in the Shastra. Because other people have motivations. And as long as a person is motivated, you might find under a certain circumstance that motivation will appear. Like two devotees, they start a business together. So the business is going good. And uh, I can tell you a real uh, one story where two devotees borrowed money from the third devotee to start a business. And so they, uh, they started it. And the first year they made a tremendous amount of profit. And rather than paying back the money from, to the other devotee, they decided to reinvest it in greater amounts of you know business adventures so what happened was after the second year they lost everything and then the person who they borrowed the money from they couldn't pay it back because they didn't have any money so what they did was they each started to blame the other person for the reason why they they went down so the two big people who did business together working together became enemies and the third person never got their money. <laughs> so there's a lot of trust there, but then something goes wrong. And what happens? So there's an old saying, don't do business with devotees. <laughs> but that's another thing. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I don't know if that helped you or not. But <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, yes, yes. We see ourselves in a certain way, but other yes. people may not see us in the yes, same way. That's what uh, even I'm thinking. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That was the answer to that chat question. I said, good luck. <laughs> okay. So don't do business with devotees. Uh, so true, but it is for preaching, he's saying. Um, and, I, and I said, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> so devotees, any more questions or comments? Okay, I am in New York now, so I'm on Eastern Standard Time. So I'll be here till uh, till Friday, and Friday I'll uh, 
Yeah. Friday, I'll be going to Connecticut, Saturday and Sunday. And then I'll be still on Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to know my schedule for events and activities, then you can contact Radha Bhakti and she'll give you all the information. And tomorrow we're doing a second initiation for Jai Radhe at the uh, temple here, Sunday feast program. And then there's some programs throughout the week in different places. I'm not sure of all the details. And then on Friday and Friday, Saturday, I do a program in New Haven, Connecticut, and on Sunday in Hartford, Connecticut. So, and then Monday, I think I'm flying in West somewhere. I think there's a place called Dallas somewhere. Yes, good one. Dallas, New Mexico, isn't it? Midwest, yeah. Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I, I trust the airline pilot to get me there. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, even though I don't know him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so we'll see. Uh, sorry, that's um, it. Yeah, uh, tomorrow morning um, there is a class with Central New Jersey devotees uh, at nine a.m. Eastern time. Mm -hmm. Is that is that that's going to be the class for the day then, right? We're going to merge two groups together. Yes, I don't have the Zoom link yet. If you can send it, uh, I had I just have a poster. Even I don't have. Um, yeah, I'll give you uh, good marriage. I'll send this one too. And send me the topic also. Yes, good marriage. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yes, good marriage. I'll send. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'll send the topic, good marriage. Sorry. You can tell me what it is. Yeah, <clears throat> how to gain? <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> how to gain victory over six enemies? Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Madha, and Matsarya. Okay. All right. Nine o'clock. Uh, yeah. Nine o'clock Eastern time. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare